Hey everyone, hello. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. My name is Tracy Collins and I specialize in helping black women create infrastructure for their businesses starting out. And I am also a writer and an artist in my own right, which I completely enjoy. But today <laughs> I'm getting ready to focus on the 22 things. And yes, I said 22, because initially I was gonna do 10, then I was gonna move to 20, but then I, I I had to add two more. So the 22 things that I wish I knew before becoming an entrepreneur. And honestly, I want to say I wish that I had a how-to video before, not just books, but a how-to video before I launched my company. So I launched my company in 2017, but I've actually been working for myself well over a decade. And so we are getting ready to get into it. Okay. So and these, you guys, are in no particular order whatsoever. So these are just the 22 things that I wish I knew before becoming an entrepreneur. Number one is be a student of your craft. Always be a forever student. Um, I love studying my craft and learning more. And I realize, of course, that you never know everything that it is that you need to know. And there's always something new to learn. So always be a student of your craft. Get as much information as you can to always get better. You want to stay up to date if there's any analytics or data that you need to keep up on. Um, so just always be a student of your craft. Be humble in that journey because you are going to learn a lot about yourself more than you will anybody else. Okay. Number two is I study other CEOs. It does not matter the genre that they're in, but I study other CEOs. I love learning how other CEOs operate, how they think, how they create mergers and acquisitions and how they dismantle companies or dissolve businesses or how they use critical negotiating skills and thinking. Um, so I study other CEOs across the board. It does not matter which field they're in. One of the things about business is once you learn the business fundamentals, they, they apply across the board. So study other CEOs and how they move. Not to duplicate, but just to create the best version of yourself as a leader. Okay. Number three, give yourself grace. This one is especially hard that I see for Black women because we are put under such immense pressure in our respective fields and in society and in our households that we have trouble giving ourselves grace. We also have trouble extending grace to others, especially to other Black women. So what I say is always give yourself grace especially when you are learning and moving and operating, because usually there is no blueprint for us. There is no someone has done it before in my family and I've seen it growing up. And oftentimes you're learning on your own. You're learning on your own. So it's important that you give yourself grace always in your journey and that you learn how to then extend it to others when necessary and need be you know, with discernment in place. So um, give yourself grace. Number four, invest in yourself. Baby, when I tell you, <laughs> CEOs, we invest in ourselves. We invest in business coaches. We invest in mentors. We invest in, in seminars and workshops and we invest. And when I say invest, I mean monetarily invest in yourself. You will never go wrong or regret betting on you ever. Never not once have I regretted betting on myself. When I bet on myself, I win. And the reason why I win is because there's always a lesson in it and I'm not going to let myself down. So when you bet on you, you will always come out winning. So always invest in yourself. There is somebody out there, you know, when you appear as a student, your teacher will come. You know, so we want to make sure that you invest in yourself and that you are gaining the necessary skill sets to become so valuable and applicable in your field, you know, that people can't help but notice or they want to align themselves with you or they see that you are elevating and that you have quality 
information, product and or service to be able to provide them. So invest in yourself. Um, number five, credit. <laughs> understand credit. And there's a lot of credit gurus out here. There's a lot of people who are credible, but then there's a lot of people who are not. And honestly, I see more people who aren't credible than they are. But understand how to leverage your personal credit for your business and also understand how business credit differs from personal credit. I don't want to, a lot of people will say, oh, you can have bad personal credit and have amazing business credit. If that's true to some degree, I have not found it to be, but if that's true to some degree, it won't get you as far as if you had great personal credit. So get in there, take the bull by the horns, understand what credit looks like and means. And when you take care of your credit, your credit will take care of you. This took me a long time to learn, but when you take care of your credit, you're able to leverage your personal credit under your business credit. You're able to make large purchases now under your business because your personal credit is now so amazing because you can stand and vouch for your business or as the guarantor. So, and then eventually your business can stand on its own. So if you don't take nothing away from this, make sure you take that away. <laughs> take care of your credit. You know, we we don't have to be in massive amount of debt to have a, exceptional credit. Make sure that you use it wisely and that you gain the necessary information that it that you need to put yourself, you know, position yourself in a great financial place so your business can sustain. Because at some point, businesses are going to need working capital and you need to be able to put yourself forward to say, this is how good I look on paper. OK, so number six, dedicate a minimum of four hours a day on your business starting out. I said this is a minimum, a minimum dedicate a minimum of four hours a day. You can do it in a straight shot. You can break it up however you want to. Something is going to have to be sacrificed. It's going to be your sleep. It's going to be, you know, going out. It can be, you know, I, I, I don't know. But something is going to have to be sacrificed. You're going to have to restructure what your day looks like. And then within those four hours a day that you are investing in time into your business and building it, then you can break that down for marketing and branding. You can break it down for making sure you have all of your business paperwork in order. You can break it down as far as like, you know, coaching and meeting with your business coach, doing something or social media, whatever it is that you need to do to invest in your business, a minimum of four hours a day. Trust me when I tell you that is going to help you on the back end actually on the front too. But trust me when I tell you, and what this does too coming out of the gate is you learn the ins and outs of your business. So when it's time for you to hire an executive assistant because you've worked so much, you know, you can tell your executive assistant what to do and how to do it. Okay. When it's time for you to grow and implement your HR department, and when it's time for you to hire a COO, or when it's time for you to hire a CFO, and when it's time for you to hire all of these people, you can really talk about your operating procedures within your company because you have worked every single aspect of that business yourself. So don't, don't. If, escape or you know cheat yourself on this end what you're going to find is the four hours a day are, are going to they're going to go by so fast and then you're going to increase what you do because now we're getting ready to see the revenue you're going to see the return on your investment because you have invested the minimum of four hours a day starting out of the gate okay so number six it get lonely y'all <laughs> it gets so lonely um, whew. so it gets lonely because oftentimes, especially starting out, you don't see a lot of people who are going in the same direction as you. This is your company. So God has given you, spirit has given you the vision for this business and brand that you are creating. And we have to be careful as far as how we share it and whom we share this information with, because there are going to be some naysayers or people who know you personally will be like, no, I don't believe that you can accomplish this. So you will begin to see your, your circle change. It may not be right away. It may become over a course of time, but trust me when I tell you it gets lonely and then you are going to have to redesign what your circle looks like because you want to surround yourself by like-minded people. 
going in the same direction, who appreciate the business or brand and company that you have and, and the, the dedication that you have. So it gets lonely. Don't let that stop you, though. OK, number eight kind of leads into it. You got to level up your circle. You have to level up who you put yourself around, where you get your information from, who you talk to and share your information with, um, how you spend your time. You have to make sure that you level up your circle. You can't be hanging around with folks who ain't doing nothing when you're trying to aspire and get somewhere. And you can't let that guilt keep you there because what will happen is not only will you not elevate, but it'll also affect your pockets. OK, and then because your mindset is affected and your energy is transferable, it doesn't die. It just transfers. So you have to make sure that you put yourself in a place and space where your energy is that that's being transferred is the energy that you want to be around. You never want to be the smartest person in the room. If I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm number one, I'm bored. Number two, I'm irritated. Number three, I'm wasting my time. OK, there's nothing for me to gain. There's nothing for me to learn. There's nowhere. There's no goals that I can set other than getting out of this space. So you always want to put yourself in a place and space where you can level up people who are doing more than you, people who are doing better than you, people who are striving and going in the, in the direction that you see yourself going in. OK, uh, get your business in order. What does that mean? Understand the legalities of the, the basic business fundamentals and infrastructure that your company needs to have in order to be established as a legitimate business. And this means the basic stuff, getting your EIN, you, I'm sure you've heard that before, establishing an entity. So it's an LLC, a C Corp, S Corp, all of those things. Understanding what that means. Um, you know, registering your company with the Secretary of State is getting the entity. You know, getting Getting your DDA or your business license at your local court office, getting your trademark or your copyrights and or your patents, all of those things are relevant when it comes to establishing your business just out of the gate. It's a simple process once you understand and know how to do it, but you want to make sure that you actually do it. Now, this is when we start to separate ourselves, the person from the actual company. OK, get your business bank account in order. Once you have the um, the articles of incorporation from the secretary of state and your EIN, which is your employee identification number, then you can go ahead and open up your business bank account Vet your 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 actual business branch under uh, banking branch to understand how they 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 support their businesses who who uh, are you know, banking with them? What's the business relationship looking like? Do they offer lines of credit? Do they offer you know, um, working capital loans? Like, What does that do? How are you able to leverage them? Because you're bringing them business, okay? Um, also understand how they pull credit. If they pull credit to open up the bank account, what from what credit bureau? Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion. You want to make sure your credit profile is clean. You want to know going in when you are ready to open up a business bank account what they're gonna ask because you are one. Of, you will want to be prepared. Okay, so get your business in order. If you don't understand how, hi, that's why coaches. That's why we coach. That's why we help you guys along the way. So get your business in order. And it's this, um, the next two I'm going to add in are identify a bookkeeper to help keep your books. You also don't want to commingle your funds. So Tracy, the person is not going to be Tracy Collins LLC. You know, don't commingle those funds. Let your business pay you as the employee. Have your bookkeeper help you establish that and keep that up. Meet with your bookkeeper on a regular basis. Uh, make sure that they understand how and have a track record of working with small businesses, um, how they help them grow. Ask, you know, vet your your bookkeeper thoroughly. The next point I want to make in, in this is identifying the proper tax person, identifying a tax person who will not only support your company, but understands how to work with, you know, companies such as yours and how get in there. How have they supported companies? What do you do? How do you protect them? How can I, you know, have X, Y and Z as write offs? You want to know how they are going to make you better. 
and help you grow and keep you legally safe and sound and financially safe and sound. So get your business in order. <laughs> okay. The next one is, hmm, we're on number, we're actually on number 12 because I just gave you three. Um, IP is king. Intellectual property is king. I am a writer. I love the fact that I can write. I love the fact that I have a creative brain. But when I tell you I will copyright everything, I will trademark what I create, that is king. So, and I'm going to do a separate video on why IP is king. So you want to begin to establish yourself to create content that is marketable and, le and that you can leverage. Okay, so when you write anything, it gets copywritten. When you brand yourself, it gets trademarked. Tracy Collins is trademarked and it will be registered. Now, granted, it takes them forever to go ahead and register stuff, but my attorney has already started, I mean, been started the paperwork. It should be time for it to be registered. So I have a lot of trademarks and I have a, just as many copyrights, okay? And if you are creating a product, then you want to make sure or inventing a product that it gets patented. Get an attorney for this. I don't recommend doing it on your own or going at it on your own. You, you want to have a business attorney. You want to have an IP attorney, people that can help facilitate keeping your business in order, okay? And protecting your brand that you're building. Next. Um, oh, I talked about those already. Business banking and leveraging personal credit. So we talked about that. Next, use social media. Use social media. Okay, so I know I'm kind of late to the YouTube game, y'all. And I'm not really late. I just procrastinated. And if you watch a video before, I'm going to link it somewhere up in here because I'm still trying to learn how to use this YouTube thing. <laughs> but I actually procrastinate sometimes on purpose to do things. And YouTube was one, was the one thing in the social media realm that I was really late to, but I find that I like it and I like it a lot. And I like it better than the rest because I'm a storyteller. I am a storyteller by nature. So it allows me to tell long form stories, but people get to see your personality. People want to know who are you? Who is the person behind this? Who, who, what are you doing in the morning? What you doing in the evening? How do you think? How do you, how do, how do you operate? People like to see your, your, your successes and eh, not so much, but how are you getting there? Tell me about your failures because that makes you relatable. So when people get to know who you are, when you use social media, they feel better in buying into your business or brand. People do business with relationships. They don't do business just because. They want to believe that they can trust you. So make sure that you connect with your audience. Like, y'all leave me some questions and comments. I'm going to reply. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think gone are the days of saying, oh, we're so elite. We can't be touched versus like, how can I connect and how can I grow and what can you teach me and what problem solving does your business or brand offer my life and how is it applicable to me? And people learn that just by social media. So connect with your folks. OK, um, consistency is key. <laughs> I got to take, take a sip of water on this one. Mm. They're not paying me to advertise. Um, but consistency is key. Whew. If people aren't doing anything, they are paying attention. Even if they are not commenting, liking, subscribing, or buying, when I tell you folks is nosy enough, they are going to pay attention. This is why consistency is key. And not only is that the reason, but you learn and you grow by, by being consistent. So make sure that you are consistent. Okay. Um, the next, be goal oriented. Set goals, set financial goals, set business goals, set daily goals, be goal oriented. This way you can work backwards as if it's already happened. Number one, that's a part of manifestation. I might do a video on manifestation too and how it's so important and so applicable in business and in everyday life. Um, but 
be goal oriented. This will also help with your four hour business days coming out of the gate. OK, so we want to make sure that you are setting tangible, actual, applicable goals and moving forward. And goals are going to change and that's OK. But what I find is when I have tasks listed, I'm more accomplished at getting them completed. OK, also, when you write down, you are actually spelling. But I'm going to say that for the manifestation video. OK, for y'all who ain't ready for that. Stay tuned. Um, the next is don't be afraid to try something new. <sighs> CEOs, entrepreneurs, we're risk takers. We are risk takers by, by nature. We are. We will take a risk. <laughs> with, and a lot of times it will sound crazy to the non-risk taker. And we're okay with that. But take a risk. Try something new. And what is on the other side of that is either you will learn you, you love it that you're good at it or that is not for you and that does not work. So there is no loss in trying something new. There are only lessons. Either you level up or you learn a lesson. So try something new, okay, um, in your business. If X, Y, and Z it doesn't work, then you got to go, you know, A, B, and C. <laughs> you just have to, you have to not be afraid of pivoting and you have to not be afraid OK, and even if there's fear present, it's OK, because it comes with the gate. It comes with the territory. You have to understand how to negotiate and how to navigate through fear. And what is on the other side of fear is freedom. So we want to make sure that we are we are trying something new. Um, the best ideas come when you least expect it. For me, the best ideas come when I'm in a shower or when I'm driving. Um the best ideas come when you least expect it. So if you don't have a good memory, such as myself, if you do not have a good memory, make sure you have a piece of paper around and make sure you have a, you know, somewhere where you can jot it down, maybe in your phone. But the best ideas are going to come when you least expect it. OK, the next one is know your peak hours. Oh, crap. I think my doorbell is about to ring. Um, but understand and know your peak hours. And like for me, I'm very innovative. I'm very creative in the morning. I'm very um, the, the, the light bulb is going off like this in my brain. So, and my peak hours are really from 9 a.m. to about 1, 1 p.m. Between 2 and 5, I'm a box of rocks. <laughs> I can't think about nothing. I'm not good at anything. So if you are nocturnal, make sure that you are working your business and brand during your peak hours. You will get the most accomplished during those times. So take a self-assessment, take some self-analysis, become introspective and understand when you are your most brightest, your most alert, when you can process and digest information at, at during those times. That's the time that you really want to be working. Okay, let me see. Um, you are your only competition. I'm going to say that again. You are your only competition. I have tunnel vision. I don't compete with nobody else but Tracy. My goal is to always be better than I was the day before. That's it. I don't care about what anybody else is doing and saying that has nothing to do with me. I think we pay too much attention, not y'all, not me, but y'all pay too much attention to what such and such has going on over there and your own shit ain't clean. You are your only competition. And I'm going to add something else to this. Celebrate other people's wins. Celebrate them out loud. What that does is the energy, I mean, the, the, the universe responds with energy frequency. When you celebrate somebody else's wins, the universe is like, ah, let me send some your way too. Okay. So we want to make sure that you understand that you are your only competition. That's it. That's all. Okay. Have a spirit of discernment. Be a critical thinker and understand when nice is applicable. Being a CEO is not a comfortable chair to sit in. You know, you always have to think critically and you always have to have the balls enough to say, no, this does not work for the greater good of the mission. 
And it's okay if people disagree with you because you're not, they're not thinking in the capacity in which you are. You are looking at your business or brand from every single intricate a angle. And you know better than them if it is going to work or not and when to say yes and when to say no. And you can be, you can be polite, you can be tactful, but you can also be firm and direct. And there are going to be some people who don't appreciate that. Okay, so we want to make sure that you have a spirit of discernment, that you are a critical thinker. You know when nice is applicable, but make sure that you are direct and firm. Okay. Next. Oh, did I get everything? I want to say this one last thing. Put everything in writing. Don't be afraid of contracts. Contracts are our friends. Okay. Contracts are our friends. And the reason why I say that is because it takes all of the guessing out of out of the framework of what's expected. People can say anything they want. They can do things on a handshake and because they feel good that day or they feel good, good in the moment. Emotions come and go. In business, there's no emotion. It's really not. As much as we want to try and put it in there, it don't belong. It's about what's in black, in black and white, meaning that you sign, I sign, we agree, we dated it, okay? And that way, should anybody not feel good or they want to, you know, take a different turn, we can go back to that contract and see what's applicable or not. And if this is working or if we need to renegotiate this contract, put everything in writing. It is going to save your ass. I promise you. So you guys, these are my 22, maybe three or four at this point, <laughs> Tom things that I wish I would have knew going into business for myself. And I hope you're able to learn from this. I'm going to do deeper dives on a couple of, of these points. IP is king and then why manifestation is so important and how applicable it is into your, your business and your brand and what you, what you draw towards you. So look out for those videos soon. I hope you have a good day. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Tracy Collins. See you later. Bye.